Um, so first of all, at the get-go, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Wikimedia Australia for the grant that um, has enabled this project to proceed. Special thanks also to Linda Pascal, who's been a great partner to work with on this four-month project. I'm just going to give a little bit of a project overview and talk about some of the achievements of the project. And then I'll hand it over to Linda to talk more about her Wikimedia in, in residence experience and some of the particular achievements that she was able to produce during the four month project. And then some time for questions at the end. The main idea was to enhance discoverability of digital library collections at the University of Divinity where I work by using a range of different Wikimedia platforms. We were able to appoint Linda as a Wikipedian in residence because of me working in a library and having access to a number of publications related to Australian women in religion. We um, were able to digitise some of those publications. One was the Women Church Journal, which was an Australian journal of feminist studies in religion. So we digitised about 40 issues of those and they were published between 1987 and 2007. And then we had quite a number of newsletters produced by the Movement for the Ordination of Women. And they also had produced about three different conference proceedings and they were all digitised as well. The wider project is the Australian Women in Religion project. But this project really, we were honing in on women and publications that tied in with kind of early Christian feminism in Australia. So kind of 1980s, 1990s kind of period. So after we digitised the material um, at my library, we then added that content to initially the university's digital collections website, but then we also um, added it to the JSTOR platform um, to hopefully enhance discoverability. And, and having it on JSTOR meant that we then had um, permanent URLs that could then provide links to reliable source material that we could then use in Wikipedia articles. And then both Linda and I um, created and improved a number of Wikidata items and Wikipedia articles. And they were both, they were related to women, um, women's groups, and also um, some of the publications um, associated with those groups. And then we proceeded to add those links to various Wikidata items and Wikipedia articles. When Linda and I first got together, we had a bit of a brainstorming process and we kind of divided up our kind of work so that, you know, we weren't treading on each other's toes. And so Linda was, you know, way more interested um, in the movement for the ordination of women and sort of she just kind of went to town with that. And I was um, more interested in the Women Church Journal. I'd previously worked on another project where we had actually gone through that journal in a lot more detail and I'd already created a number of um, Wikipedia articles for women who were associated with that journal. So this is just a screenshot of a page on JSTOR. So this is just the page for um, the Women Church Archive. There were sort of 40 issues of the journal that were digitised. So you obviously can click onto each item. Every page then has a different URL, which can then, you know, down to the article level, you can then um, use those links to add to Wikipedia articles. Um, these are just an example of the kind of links that we added um, to Wikipedia. Wikipedia articles and also the bottom one is in an, a Wikidata item. So they tended to be in the external links section. So if a woman say was involved, you know, was an editor of Women Church, then we would add the complete archive at the bottom. And then sometimes in select publications, we could just link to the particular article on the JSTOR platform. As part of the process, I had created Wikipedia articles for each of the publications that we digitised. So on the Wikidata item for each of those publications, we could then add full work available at URL and have the, the link there as well. So we created two dashboards, basically because we were working on two different um, aspects to the project. So one was more for Linda's articles and one was more for mine. And I've just recorded some of the totals there um, for the two um, dashboards together. So the 26 articles created over that four month period, that includes um, Wikipedia articles and Wikidata articles. There were quite a number of that we just edited and improved. And you can see there the, um, the other stats. So when I look today, we're up to about 63,000 article views, which is kind of um, a 
bit hard to comprehend, but um, yeah, it's all, all very, um, it's, it's been a really um, interesting learning curve, the whole project. A few other outcomes for the project, um, Linda can talk more about her Wikimedian in residence um, experience and report. Um, I've drafted an article about the whole project and hoping to submit that to a peer reviewed publication in the coming months. It was interesting to move away from the sort of biographical articles that I'd mainly focused on before and to kind of also write articles about publications um, and also women's Christian feminist groups as well. I did get the opportunity to present at a seminar in um, Brisbane in July. Um, the seminar was called um, Breaking Through the Stained Glass Ceiling, Women in the Church, Past, Present and Future. So it was really kind of spot on seminar um, and a lot of people there are very interested in the project as well. And then I'm also presenting in November at the Australian and New Zealand Theological Library Association Conference in Christchurch. We also shared a newsletter in August um, about the project, just kind of general information about what we'd achieved and what we were doing. And then that newsletter itself was then shared on several other blog posts and other media platforms. What we haven't got to yet is the kind of the analysis of the data for um, looking at the digital platforms and to see if traffic does increase over time, potential to look at you know, the referring URL to see if traffic is indeed coming from Wikimedia kind of platforms. So that's kind of next step. I think we're just kind of having a bit of a breather for a little while before we kind of then start to look at that data again. That's a very brief kind of overview of what we were trying to achieve. So I'm very happy to hand over to Linda and she can talk more about um, the experience from her point of view. Um, so as Kerry said that I, I focused on the movement for the ordination of women, their, their newsletters, and um, also the articles about the women who were ordained as, as a result of Mo's um, lobbying. Um, and also I, I made lots of links, sort of connected up a lot of um, existing articles about ordination in the um, Anglican church in Australia and world, worldwide. Because it, it, it turns out there's sort of, a lot of um, articles related to the ordination of women, um, but they were all kind of in silos and that they weren't very well linked. So <laughs> we've linked a lot of them up now. Um, and you have to sort of read them all to get the whole picture and the whole history. Of them. Um, also, um, I updated our Australian Women in Religion um editing guide that, that was sort of just a draft so I turned it into a, um, a beginner's guide to editing Wikipedia for um, future editors who might join the AWR group. Um, I was meant to add images to commons to you know add, add more images of um, ordained women and you know into their articles and everything but yeah we we had a problem with um, photographs because we just we can't find the photographer of um, a lot of things. Anyway, we can't we can't get the we can't get the you know free license release. So I haven't been successful yet in getting adding images to Commons, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Also, part of the work plan we we set out a work plan was to facilitate a future editor thon, but uh, we didn't do that during the project. We'll do that in the future. From April to August, what I created, the, the method I used was to create two new articles that were sort of central articles that I could then link out from and could also act as sort of almost like templates or um, how to write articles about Australian religion. So I created two new articles about two women who um, I could work out that they were notable enough <laughs> which was another issue in this project about making sure that the biographical articles that were women were notable. I created two new articles. One was Peter Sherlock and one was um, Susanna Payne, biographical articles. And the the way I kind of proved their notability was that they're both women who were um, ordained in the first group um, of women ordained in the Anglican Church in Australia in 1992, so that they were firsts, and they also both became deans of cathedrals, which is kind of the next level down from a bishop. 
<laughs> so they they achieved you know high level positions in the Anglican Church. So I, I, I sort of put all that together and I wrote triticles about them and then sort of um, practiced linking out to every, you know, every other article I could, then used as um, references, um, citations, um, a lot of the Movement for the Ordination of Women newsletters from the 80s and 90s. So the women I was writing about, because they were the first women... Um, ordained and, and they were active in male or supported by the movement for the ordination of women um, I was able to find reference to them in a newsletter so I could use that as a reference and then link through to the um, digitized newsletter on JSTOR and I also did the um, created a new list and it's the first time this list has been um, kind of properly researched and properly published and that's the list of the um, women who were first ordained as um, priests in the Anglican Church in 1992, um, all over Australia. So there was, a, there was a big push in 92 to get women to be ordained as priests. And um, there had been kind of half lists before, but, but they had names wrong and they had the names dioceses wrong and, you know, they were a bit messed up. So um, I went through the newsletters. The newsletters, you know, had all, a lot of information, had photos and big celebration services and all sorts of things. Um, so I was able to, um, you know, identify the proper names of all women and get the list right. So I published that. And then we were able to use that list as um, every time we write an article about one of those women, we can, you know, blue link their name and sort of link out. And, and so it's kind of, um, we've made a lot of connections in the ordination of women. Another thing I did, uh, so so I contributed to or updated about, besides the ones I created, I mean, I only created three new articles really, but then I, I used that and jumped over to about 22 existing articles relating to the ordination of women and sort of updated them or um made extra contributions, added new sections, new information to them, and, of course, kept on adding references from the male newsletters. And one thing I did, because I kept coming across lots of, in, in my research, kept coming across lots of um, quotes, people saying things about whether women should be ordained or not, I started adding that to a wiki quote page. So wiki quotes, one of the sister projects of Wikipedia, and there was one, a page with only one quote on it from someone about the ordination of women. So whenever I, I came across, across a good quote, I've um, added to that um, page on wiki quotes. So now there's probably about, I don't know, about 20, 30 um, quotes for and against the ordination of women. And some of them are, are quite um, hysterical. <laughs> You know, like the guy who said, and he was recorded in a documentary saying this, the guy who said you might as well ordain a meat pie as ordain a woman. <laughs> anyway, there's there's all sorts of things like that. But they're, they're all documented. So I was able also to put references um, and citations on um, WikiQuote. And then I was able to put the wiki, the WikiQuote template on a whole lot of the articles related to the ordination of women. So you know how you can put templates on um, an article that says, um, you know, see see wiki quote for more information on this subject or see Commons has got more material on this subject. So I've, I've put a whole lot of wiki quote templates on And I've also put a lot of see also lists in the various pages so people can. Um, so I probably referenced did about 14 references to the digitised mail newsletters and we'll see um, we'll see whether people go to the actual digitised material. And another method I used to do this was to sort of mine the newsletters. So instead of starting from the article or the subject I was writing about, this, the, the way to do it is to start from the newsletter itself, from the digitised document, um, and look for events or names or people and then sort of 
take that little tidbit of information and put it in a relevant article and then, you know, use the newsletter as a So um, I, I found by by doing that, um, and helpfully the mail newsletters bolded the names of people. So I was able to quickly scan through and find names and sort of um, use them to write articles about those people or include those names in other articles because they did something um, significant. And I was also able, uh, doing that, to identify over time, for example, um, bishops and dioceses who were against the ordination of them. And some of them changed their mind over time. So there's quite a number of bishops and dioceses in the church that have changed their mind and were totally against ordaining women as ministers. And, and now they're full-on and have ordained women. Um, and so I've, I've kind of recorded that on their, <laughs> on their pages, on some of the um, bishops' pages, that they changed their mind. Um, or the diocesan pages or the cathedral page or whatever. So I've, I've shown that, that um, you know, the changes over time through history. And I've been able to um, document, document that by um, referring again to the newsletters. The four main challenges I faced was establishing the notability of women. I, I think some of the notability guys guidelines um, work against women, women artists and um, women in religion, I think. For example, there's a um, Wikipedia guideline that, that bishops are automatically notable. So you don't have to sort of prove notability of a bishop. A bishop is automatically notable. So you can put a page about a bishop you know, write an article about any bishop. Um, but the problem is that women, because women have only, in the Anglican Church have only been ordained since as priests since 92, and you have to be a priest before you're a bishop, you know, there's a very small pool of women who are now bishops. So that's, whereas there's, you know, thousands of, <laughs> of men because they were ordained as priests earlier. So there's just various things that... Um, make it difficult to show, according to Wikipedia notability, that these women are notable and you sort of have to work hard. Um, another thing was that um, I found, I was alerted to the fact that I was overusing citations, just just generally, I said before, maybe because I've got a um, history background, but generally overusing citations and someone put a site kill template one of my articles and we had this big discussion about the way too many so I've, and sometimes other edit, editors have gone through and just deleted a whole bunch of references in my articles and I've had to go back and find them again and rebuild them and, and so that was something that I experienced and, and so I've had to go back and think about if I use too many citations and um, change some of my articles and delete some. Uh, no freely licensed photos, that was a challenge. But one of the big challenges is, of course, that this the ordination of women is still a live topic and it's still a controversial topic in some areas in the Anglican Church in Australia. And um, that can lead to some some sort of discussion on talk pages and um, some reference sources that people have been using um, for articles about the ordination of women, some reference sources have, have, are really dodgy because they're um, against the ordination of women and they sort of vilify women priests. So I've had to um, delete a whole bunch of those kind of sources and, um, you know, they're halfway to getting blacklisted <laughs> as a source. But anyway, so this um, intra-church politics is still happening about whether you should 
even mention the ordination of women because you know some people don't like it. <laughs> with the media, anyway. So um, what I liked of the whole project for me was that on the twelfth of August, a bishop in a diocese had changed its mind, decided that it was a good thing if they ordained some women, and so on the twelfth of August there was a live on YouTube. You could watch it live service where this bishop who had previously been against the ordination of women um, decided that he could ordain these women as priests and so it was live streamed and so that was great. Um, a lot of people watched the live stream of these um, women being ordained and I set up a section in my um, a draft in my sandbox ready to go with the names of the women and what happened and how this bishop changed his mind and everything, ready to go. So at the end of the service, the minute it ended, I put that section, I updated that um, page, that diocese page or bishop's page and everything and said, you know, they used to be against ordaining women, but now they've changed their minds and they, they ordained these three women and here you can even go and watch it, you know, and had external links in the references, um, external yeah. links section that people could even go and watch the YouTube live stream of it. At the same time, that same day, 12th of August at 11am, another um, um, diocese installed a woman dean in their cathedral. So I watched two screens at the same time. I watched <laughs> both services on two different screens, one on the television, one on my computer. And I had her information ready to go. So as soon as her installation service was over, I updated the cathedral page where the deans are usually listed and added her name as a dean. So that that was really fun for me to do live updates. <laughs> history in Wikipedia. <laughs>